Hi everybody, um, it's been a few weeks, this is an update, um, yeah, it's the first time in weeks I've sort of had any privacy to um, sort of get on and make any of these videos, so um, yeah, it must be three or four weeks I think now, I mean, I have been doing stuff, so not been idle in that time, just haven't had a chance to do any videos, anyway, this is the um, first few items, Carrying on with my World War II stuff, these are for my Panzer Grenadiers. These figures are all Warlord miniatures apart from him, who's an artisan. They're, the other four are from the HQ pack that they do. Um, radio operator and sort of signaler, I like him, nice figure that. Um, and he was on, got like an oblong base, so I thought I'd stick a, another troop on there with him. Because I think in the game, in bolt action, the uh, radio operator I think has a couple of blokes with him, so I'll have a, that one and then another on his own stand. Um, this bloke would be the lieutenant or lieutenant. I always say lieutenant, say it the American way. I do always have done. I think he'd be like lieutenant. Looks a bit. bit more SS looking but um quite a nice figure. Uh, whoops, medic at the front there, I'll just sort of tip this up a bit. Medic at the front and uh what I'm gonna use as a captain at the back. Quite nice figures. Yeah, I like them, say so, and uh, say so Warlord are a good match with Artisan size wise. So, that's them, that's the HQ. Nice, uh, I like them, nice, nice figures. I was a bit unsure about this fella, um, I think he looked in bare metal. I mean, you know, figures always never look as good as the they turn out when they're painted. But um, he looked a bit caricaturish, bare metal. But you know, undercoat and then start painting looked a lot better. So uh, yeah, quite nice. I'm quite happy with those. So that's your HQ. I think for Panzer Grenadiers now, I've done about all the infantry I need. I need. Uh, to do for um, say a thousand or fifteen hundred point bolt action army, all I've got to do really is finish off the vehicles. Um, got to do another tank because the tank I had done, I ended up experimenting with a winter camo effect. So I've got to do another one of those. I think I've got I've got another Panzer somewhere. I think I've got a Panther as well. Um, I've got a Hannah Mag. It's already done, I need to do another one of those, and I think that will be about it, I think. Um, for the Panzer Grenadiers anyway. Might have a stub or something like that, um, I'll see, but yeah, I mean, troops wise, I've, I've done all I need now. Um, when I do get the vehicles finished, I'll do a video showing the whole lot in sort of one, one go. Anyway, that's... Panzer Grenadiers. Now I'm sort of. Oh yeah, no, I did. Um, next is some false Grimmiega. I'm not sure if I pronounce that right, but German paratroopers anyway. What I've started doing now is um, now I've done my Panzer Grenadiers. I'm kind of. I don't know if I can fit all those in. I can just about. I'll move them around anyway. Yeah, I'm sort of going through all the different units that I would have in the World War II collection and doing, say, five to ten figures of each just so I can sort of get through them. Well, just so I can do a different, something different all the time, really. Basically, I want to paint up different types of units 
when, I have, when I'm happy with the way I've done them, I'm writing down what I've done. So I'm basically going to go through everything, get everything written down so that when it comes to doing them properly, one, I'm already sort of got a good start because I've got a squad done, and two, I know what I'm doing, you know, paint scheme wise and the colours that I've used. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, it might seem a bit bits and bobs, I suppose, but um, it's a good way of making a start on everything and sort of getting down what how I'm going to paint them all. So uh, that was the first thing I did with these. I, I sort of assembled and undercoated these paratroopers. These are artisan, by the way. <coughs> and um, I fancy doing the tropical uniform you know, purely for something different to the Panzer Grenadiers, um, camo schemes. Um, yes, yeah, so I've done the, this 10 in the, I think that's called Sumpf Muster 44, the sort of camo smock. Um, and then I've gone with like the tan trousers and helmets. For the next squad I do of these, I might do a mix of um, the original sort of green, greenish jumpsuits they had and some must have 42 I think it's called, something like that, it's more of a grey, greyish looking um, camo scheme but I'll keep the tropical helmets and uh, t the tan helmets and tan trousers and it'll just uh, give a bit of variety never really sure about um, things like paratroopers because they're elite troops, I mean would they be should they really all be in their the same uniforms or does their elite status sort of did it give them more leeway to wear whatever they wanted really so not sure i might you know I'm undecided whether i'll do them all in this tropical scheme or uh do what i've said and do a couple in you know do half say do five in the green and five in the grayish and then just mix them all up but uh yeah anyway that's the, those done and based. Um, I'm quite happy with how they turned out. It's got a nice looking scheme actually. Um, used Vallejo paints for them. I think I used um, Tan Earth as the base for it and Flat Earth for the brown and um, I think it was German camo dark green for the green bits and then obviously just highlighted everything. But yeah, pretty happy with how they've come out. Sort of nice looking unit that. I mean I was thinking of using these for um Italy and I believe they did I think they wore this sort of uniform in Italy, so whether they did or not really don't matter, I'm going to still use them. So, um, yeah, nice looking, nice looking colour scheme that, I think. I haven't actually, still really haven't got tired of doing camo, uh, still quite happy to do it. Um, yeah, so that's those German artisan, <coughs> clever, yeah, artisan, um, German powers then. Dropping those has reminded me now that I'm going to have to go back and varnish everything. That's going to be a bit of a chore. Um, especially now with it getting cold weather, your varnish can react a bit funny, can't it? I've got some brush on gloss, which I'll do, but I wanted to do that and then spray uh, a matte varnish. And I believe it should sort of help solidify these um, tufts and things a bit better. But same with it being winter. I don't know if you know, leave them, well, winter coming, leave them out in the garage if the varnish might um, go a bit funny on them. But that's something I've got to do anyway, varnish them all, I think, soon. So that's those German Powers Artisan. Now for the stuff I'm sort of, sort of part way through and I'm sort of jumping around slightly. These are. British Paras. Uh, these three are Crusader. Chap at the end is an artisan. 
Um, again, more camo, but I'm trying to make them all look different. You know, trying to sort of replicate the actual camo smocks they all had, but um, I'm also trying to keep them looking distinct from each other. Seems to be going all right so far. That's four that are finished, apart from the bases on three of them there I haven't done. Um, the beret on this one, I'm not sure if I want something a bit more maroon coloured. I don't know if that's too red. But um, I got him done anyway, so it's just you know, something different to the helmeted figures, just so I get an idea how the berets look. But I might have a go at doing something a bit more maroonish. So there's yeah, those four that are finished, and then they've got these ones that I'm just starting. And um, these are all, these ones are all artisan. Yeah, they're nice looking figures. Uh, so like you can see, I'm probably just got started on them really. So that'll be another squad of 10 finished when I do finish them. And uh, like I say, I'll, have, I'll know what I'm doing for the paint schemes when it comes to doing them properly. Because I'll, I'll be doing the British Airborne Army. So. I could always have like a squad of airborne in with um, standard British anyway. But yeah, that's British powers. Say so artisan and crusader, which all mix well. <clears throat> Next thing, still on World War Two theme, are some US airborne. Look at these ones so far. I mean, again, not got very far at the moment, but these are Warlord. Get uh, these ones. And there's a 30 cal, I think it is, 30 cal uh, machine gun team. Now, hang on a minute, just got to get something. Yeah, these uh, yeah back. These ones at the front are all sort of metal miniatures, and they're from this box set. If we can get it in there, a bit close here, but I'll just lift the camera up a bit. The pack. Oh yeah, it's from that box set, Paratrooper Squad. Which is, um, I think it's a slightly older set that they did, but you know, I quite like the look of them, I believe. Oh, and yeah, and the two at the back here are from their more recent plastic box set. They're all, they're, those two are in different uniforms, I believe, from the, um, the metallic ones. I think, I'm not trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about because I don't really, but I think they're the two plastic ones are in what was called M43 outfit and these ones, the metal ones, are in what was the M42 outfit I think this one, the, the metallic ones, the metal ones, the M42 outfit looks very modern, I think, it looks almost like sort of modern Special Forces uniforms doesn't look like World War II at all, well it does, but it just looks very modern for um, a World War II uniform, uh, whereas those two at the back look more like what you'd expect from World War II um, equipped soldiers. Uh, that uniform is going to be in a more more of a greenish colour scheme, whereas this is going to be more tan, but with a greenish tint. I'm going to go over this with. Um, Got military shader from Army Painter, so I'm going to go over that the brown with that green, and once I've highlighted it a bit more, it'll give it that sort of brownish green cast. I'm hoping, I and mean, I'm sort of going by a paint tutorial by the the War Gamer that he was doing for the plastic uh, set, 
no it wasn't, it was a metal character figure I think. So I'm sort of following that but um, partly following that anyway and sort of doing a bit of it my own way but um, yeah, I'm going to see how it comes out, I'm going to concentrate on these two first, finish them, make sure I'm happy with those two before I finish the other eight. But yeah, nice figures anyway. Um, they're very, like I say, they're very sort of modern-like and there's lots of pouches and straps and bits and bobs on them. Um, fairly, a bit more difficult to paint than your standard World War II stuff, I think, because, um, yeah, save all the, like, the, they've got ties and stuff around their knees, they've got knee pads on, which I haven't done yet because they're in green. Uh, yeah, very sort of, um, a lot of parts to their uniform, so very modern looking I think. But nice figures, I like them. I wasn't sure about them, in the metal, again, in the metal form I looked at them and thought, hmm, don't know about these. They looked a bit kind of rough and ready, but once I got them undercoated, I could start seeing that they are sort of nice, nicely made figures. Plastics are very nice as well. Um, Always prefer metal, but you know, plastics again, they look bored or do some great plastic sets. Uh, and these are very nice looking figures, so yeah, I'm going to be having like two lots of US Airborne. I think these these ones were from the Normandy landings, I think, and I think the M43 uniform came in later. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to concentrate on these two guys at the front that have done the most work on before I go back and finish the rest off. So that's those. <clears throat> last thing, well, last few things, is a bit of a return to Dark Ages. Um, first of all, there's these two figures. He's a footsaw. This guy is an Irish chieftain that was um, free with any order you placed over took 25 quid through October and I placed a few orders because um, I hadn't bought any Dark Age stuff for a while so I've ended up with about two or three of this bloke but it's a nice figure and it says it's not going to be released so at least I've got three of them um, yeah I've been buying Picts and um, Romano British stuff as well um, Irish, because I've I, I bought a load of Irish um, earlier in the year, and uh, Foot Soldier just released a few more bits for the Irish troops, so I bought some of those. Might do an unboxing of those at some point. But anyway, yeah, he was the free Irish chieftain, and that was sort of what set me off on my Irish again, because I thought, well, I've done my Vikings, and I always meant to get back and finish um, the opposition for them. Having said that, you know, Saga is. Um, going to be a new edition of that so now I'll be sort of waiting for that to come out before I play with them so there's not in such a hurry really to get them done I can do them as a sort of a bit of a break from World War 2 just sort of fill in thing this character here this figure here I think is absolutely brilliant I absolutely love this figure it's um, again foot sore and it's Guinevere I believe it was a, f a free figure with any offer with any audio made um, I'm not sure what month, might have been June, July, August, something like that. But I do know at the time I didn't have spare cash to to order anything from Futsal. Um, so I missed that. And then I emailed them to say, you're going to release this figure. And I think they got inundated with emails asking for this figure to be released. So they did. And it's only three quid. So every order I made, I bought one of these. So I've got about three of that figure now. Um, very versatile looking figure, I think. I mean, you could use that. Obviously, it's Guinevere, so it's Arthurian, but she wouldn't be out of place any Dark Age setting. So, you know, Scottish, Pict, Irish, Saxon, Viking, any of those, and also make a good fantasy character as well, I think. So, um, yeah, really, really like that figure. It's, you know, nothing spectacular posing about it, it's just a really nice looking figure. 
good pose, um, nicely sculpted. I've never actually painted any foot saw, I've got quite a few, you know, because I say I bought um, loads of their Irish earlier this year, but never got around to painting them. And um, now I've undercoated these two, I'm starting to think, you know, I've got a bit of an urge to paint some of their stuff to see how good they turn out. So, yeah, that's those two Irish Chieftain Guinevere for the foot saw. And finally, back on the Irish theme. With that chieftain, I've decided to dig out my some of my foot saw Irish and make a start on them. And these are you know, basically Irish javelin men. Um, foot saw again. Um, yeah, these are the spears that foot saw sell. Uh, to me, they're very they're too slender and fine for spears I think well for my taste anyway but I think they make brilliant javelins I mean these were 50 mil long and I've cut them down to about 35 mil because I always thought javelins were a bit smaller um, yes yeah, so I've ch chopped them down a bit and I'm gonna they're all gonna have be carrying two javelins because on on their uh, left hand I'm gonna have the shield or buckler and I'll have a javelin in that hand as well which is pretty much how that. I mean, they used to carry three or four javelins, I think. But um, I'm not sure about fitting more than one behind the shield. I don't know. I think I'll just stick with, you know, one in each hand and a buckler. So, yeah, that'll be my Irish... The start of my Irish, where I uh, get much further with them. But, yeah, the, um, yeah, the spears that they supply, they're, they're pretty good. But, for me too fine to be used as spears but I think they make great javelins. They'd also, about 50 mil, would make great pikes for 10 mil. Because that's something I'd like to get back to. I was doing 10 mil English Civil War and I sort of held some of these spears up with the uh, 10 mil figures I've already done and they would make really good pikes for them. Uh, a lot more solid than the wire I've been using. So I shall be once I get back to me, 10 mil, I'll stock up on these spy, uh, spears. Uh, so, yeah, that's where I am at the minute. Um, got a few bits going on. Um, I'm going to concentrate on these US Airborne, I think. Get them to a stage where I know what I'm doing and I'm happy with how they look. Finish that squad, and then I shall finish off the... British powers, and then I might have a little break and do these um, Dark Age figures. That's what I think I'm going to do, but I, I do want to carry on doing them um, squads of World War Two. I want to do some U.S. winter troops. I want to do some German winter troops. Got Russian winter troops to do, so I want to get a bit of all of those done as well. Just to get um, get down what I'm doing, so now how, how I'm going to paint them when it comes to doing them more properly. But yeah, that's it for now. Um, as always, thanks for anybody who subscribed. Don't think I've had any. I've not had many new subscribers lately. Um, had two or three. Uh, Brush and Quill. I believe he's just started watching some of my stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, discovered a few new ones lately, Brush and Quill being one of them, um, Enigmatic Gamer, they both, both those doing some nice stuff. Um, I'm trying to think there's an, another chap actually, oh, um, Ian Waring I think his name is, I'll, uh, I'll put a link in on this video, but I think it's Ian Waring. Uh, but anyway, he's only done a few videos, he's hardly got any subscribers, he's only got about three or four subscribers. He's just been doing quick, sort of one, two minute videos. Um, I mean, I will say the first few he did were a bit sort of ropey, as in, he's still getting used to 
making videos are a bit dark, um, but his video is a lot better now. Uh, he's doing Napoleonics, doing a nice job as well. Uh, he's currently doing Polish vistula stuff. So yeah, I'll put a link to yeah, I'll put a link to the few I've mentioned there, and um, maybe people can check them out. Um, but I don't think any of them have got a massive amount of subscribers. It'd be nice for them to get a few more people watching and um, do comment on their videos as well. That's one thing I, I've, you know, I like to see if people have watched the video. I like them to at least make a comment, and I always make a comment on any video I watch because um, I mean I don't think we're all fishing for compliments, but it's nice to see that people have watched and you know even if we just say. You know, comment, yeah, nice work, that's all you need to do, a couple of words. I think it's good to um, give people encouragement, um, especially when they've got hardly any subscribers as well, because then, you know, the, you might get to the point where you think, well, there's any point doing this. Is anyone watching? So, um, yeah, do check out the any ones I've um, mentioned. So I'll put links on there and uh, yeah, give them a watch. Um, but other than that, thanks to anybody who has watched any of my videos and subscribed and commented. Uh, much appreciated. So take care everybody and hopefully I'll be able to get another video done a bit sooner than this one. Take care anyway. See ya.